Three weeks ago, I added some links to some of our top blog posts, and frankly, the results that we got actually really surprised me. Now, for the sake of our experiment, I only focused on our top few blog posts, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for you, so let me address that here in this video. So first, let's talk about what actually happened. As you might expect, all three of the articles had an increase in their click-through, basically a decrease in their bounce rate. The number of people that came to that article and then continued on to another page on the website, that went up. But two of those articles only saw a very, very small increase, while the other one did a whole lot better. So in this video, I want to address a couple of different questions. The first question is why? Why did two of them not perform very well at all? But then the second question is the one that really matters to you, which is, is it worth it to take the time away from writing and from other activities on your blog to do this kind of interlinking when it's possible that you might see results like we saw on the lower two? All right, now here are the articles we linked from, and I want you to be thinking as I show you these about which one you think it was that did better than the other two. This first article here is about food safety. It's about pasta that's been left out. The links that I linked um, out to other articles are here near the very bottom of the article, and that's in large part because they're, they're other very closely related articles. Both of them are about other parts of the pasta, one about pasta sauce and the other about ground beef and whether or not those are safe to eat after being left out. That's, that's all. There was those two links. The next article was this one. This is if I'm making pasta for a big group, how much do I need? And there's actually several links in this blog post that fall into sort of three different groups. The first group was this here, which is how much spaghetti and how much lasagna you need for a group. Basically, these are both articles that answer a more specific question than the one that this article that we're in is answering. And the suspicion here is that a percentage of the people that came to this article might have one of these more specific questions. The next group of articles is a ways further down. And the assumption here is, Somebody that's making pasta for a large group may also be needing to make sides, other dishes that go with pasta for the same size group. So these all link to different articles about foods that pair well with pasta, like garlic bread, green salad, etc. And they're answering this question, how much do I need of each of those if I want to feed a large group? And then lastly, I did link to this article about pasta food safety, the one that we just linked out from in the other one. Uh, it's about whether or not you can eat pasta that was left out overnight. And then lastly, the third article that we did in this experiment was about rice and how much rice in pounds do you need to feed a large group of 100 people. As far as internal links go, this has a link here about uh, sushi rice and how much sushi rice you need. It has a link uh, much further down about if it's safe and when it's safe to eat rice that's been left out. So a lot like the pasta food safety article. And then down here near the bottom, I have a link to a recipe that we have on the website for a food that pairs well with rice. So now what do you think? Which one of these did best in terms of getting people to actually click through to another piece of content? Now in hindsight, it actually feels really, really obvious to me. But as I was creating these links, some of the reasons why the others didn't perform didn't jump out at me right away. And I wanna share them with you so that you don't make some of the same mistakes. Now, the first article that didn't do that well was the pasta food safety article. Only about 1% of the readers of that article clicked on one of the two links that I added. The other that didn't do that well was the rice article where about 1.4% of the people who read the article clicked on one of my uh, three links that I added. So what made the difference? Well, if we think about the pasta one that did really well, in that one, the links were very, very relevant. So if you think about the question that the person's asking when they read the article, and, and then you think about what are the other things that they need to know, not just that they need to know, but that they need to know right now, we're gonna be more likely to be able to link them to other content that can help them. So in this case, I linked them to content, again, about more specific types of pasta. I also linked them to that really helpful content um, around other foods that pair well with pasta, and about what sort of quantities they would need. If we think about some of the other ones like the rice article, well, when I'm making rice for 100 people or I'm thinking about having to make rice for 100 people and figuring out how much I need, I'm probably not yet thinking about whether or not I can eat that rice if I happen to leave it out. Does that make sense? 
That's why that didn't work that well. That same person may have that question in a week or two, but they don't have it right now. This is why we run experiments like this on our own blogs. Every time we do, we learn another thing. In this case, and this time around, what I learned was when it comes to interlinking, don't force it. If you don't have another great resource for the reader of this article, don't take the time to try to force it um, and add some content to this one to try to force it to fit um, other articles on, that are already on your website. If instead you see that, oh, there, there are some good opportunities here, but I don't already have that resource on my site, that's fine. Make a note of it on your search analysis so that you can add that article to your website later. Spend five minutes thinking about it and move on and then add links to other articles on your website instead. Okay, so now we have to address that second question. Was it worth it? If the trade-off here is I can spend time writing more content for my website or I can spend time creating links between existing articles that are on my website, what I found when I did all the math, and it's really boring, so I'm not gonna take the time to show it all to you right now. I'm gonna spare you that. What I found was in our case on this site, it was basically a wash. The amount of additional traffic I would get from an average article that I add to this website versus the additional traffic that I get from people clicking through was almost exactly the same, which is kind of a cool coincidence. But there are a lot of instances where I would opt to do this internal linking instead of adding new content. And here are the cool reasons why. First of all, there are a ton of really good long-term benefits many of which are a little bit harder to distinguish or to prove that come from internal linking, but that experience tells me internal linking really, really helps with these things. The first one here is an increase in organic traffic. This often takes a little bit longer to happen, but it does happen. And in fact, I saw this in the results as well. Here's what I mean. Those articles that we linked to, yes, they got some additional traffic because of click-throughs, but they're also getting a higher amount of traffic overall that's not accounted for by those click-throughs. More people are finding that content through search. And I think there are a lot of reasons for this. I think in part, it's because that content can get indexed faster, but those articles were already indexed on my site. So what happened? They ranked faster, they ranked better because Google was seeing people click through and go to those articles. I honestly believe that that's what's happening. The next big benefit is an increase in topical authority. The more content we have on any one sort of cluster of content or one topic on our website helps us build additional authoritativeness in that industry or for that topic. If we cover a wide range of topics, but only surface level, we never build any topical authority. And so we don't have that authoritativeness with search engines or with people. That leads to the next benefit, which is an increase in EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, but not just with search engines like Google, also with people. When it comes to people, we usually refer to that as brand recognition or just trustworthiness. The more helpful content we create for people that answers more of their questions than just the first one they came to our website for, the more likely they'll be to remember our brand and come back later. I saw something really cool in these results. One of the things that I saw happening was people reading one of these articles and with these internal links there, I think it helped trigger in their mind uh, sort of a knowledge or understanding that I have more to tell you. I have more helpful content for you on this site. So even though they weren't necessarily interested in one of those specific articles, they were more likely to go use the search bar. I saw that happen multiple times, even just in the last week on this website for those articles where I added new links to them. And then another really cool benefit of this is we get to know the reader better. When all of the readers on our website are essentially coming to one article and leaving, we're not able to really capture much information about them, especially because Google Analytics is anonymizing all this data, right? So we don't know almost anything about them except maybe some demographics. But when we see the way users behave by clicking through, going from one article to another, potentially to another, we're able to start seeing sort of the path people take on our website and understand and get to the bottom really of what it is that they're trying to accomplish when they use our website. And when we start to do this at a larger scale, we get to know our reader avatar. We get to understand who they are or understand at least who a few of the different reader avatars are on our website. And it's an awesome way to get to know them better so that we can create better content for them in the future 
that will better drive results for you and potentially make it easier for you to sell an awesome info product and make a whole lot more money with your website. In addition to these cool long-term benefits, one of the other reasons I would definitely do interlinking is because there are a lot of times where I'm just not in the right headspace to be writing. If writing is the only thing you do on your blog, you will probably burn out at some point. So once you've written enough content on your website that it can start to do well, and you're starting to get some actual data in Google Analytics and Google Search Console, I think it's absolutely worth it to take a day that you would have spent a couple hours writing a blog post and instead spend some or all of that time doing internal linking, starting at the top blog posts on your website in terms of traffic. Now I mentioned in the very beginning, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing what I did, which was only taking maybe the top three. My recommendation when you do internal linking is to start at the top in terms of traffic, but skip any that just don't have a logical click through to another article on your website. If you don't have a good resource to link to, don't force it. Instead, come up with a few ideas in the course of a few minutes of resources you could have and maybe should have on your website and make note of them in your search analysis. Then next time you go to do search analysis, you can go validate those ideas, make sure that they're actually good ideas to write about and that you can win against the competition and then go ahead and move on and do the internal linking on the next articles on your list. Now, a minute ago, I mentioned topical authority. A couple years ago, we started a big experiment that included this exact website that was around uh, topical authority, it was around search analysis, and it's one that we've never talked about here on the YouTube channel. And I'm excited that in some of our upcoming videos, I'm gonna get to walk you through that experiment and some of the really cool things we learned around topical authority. This is extremely important. If you get it wrong, it could prevent your blog from ever succeeding. Doing it right can allow your blog to take off so much faster than what we've seen on many blogs in the past. So as soon as that video is ready, I'm gonna put it right here for you to click on it. And until then, I'll put a different video here so that you have something really helpful for you that you can go watch and it'll help you with your blog. But I am super excited for you to watch that video about topical authority so that you can learn just how important it is for you and your blog, just like it is for me and for mine.